This is the knife on the table that I desperately wish was still in production. Benchmade, if you're listening, from me to you, please. Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. My name's George, and I'm sitting down here with Mr. H. He has a gargantuan collection he's been collecting for decades. And here we're just gonna talk about a small sampling of his Benchmates. And is Benchmates your favorite brand? It's one of my favorite. I, you, mm -hmm. how, how can you say you have a favorite when there are so many wonderful brands out there? But Benchmate, like top, top drawer, definitely. One of the best. Why don't you tell us where you got started with Benchmate? Okay, knife shopping as knife nuts do. <laughs> Ran into uh, the Benchmade brand at one of the local retailers, I don't even remember which one for sure, came across this lovely Griptilian. And I thought, man, I, uh, you know, I'd heard about Benchmade and, and know that they're not the cheapest knife that you can purchase. But when I saw the price of this and felt the quality, I said, I've got to have that. And that was one of the first Benchmades that I ever got. Uh, another one of my very first one is down the line. We can talk about that in a minute. But this is a pre-production Griptilian and the thing that's interesting about this is that half serrated, but it's made out of 440C hmm. instead of the upgraded knife steel that they're using today. Still yeah. love it. Still works wonderful. Yeah, the Griptilian was sort of my first big boy knife that I saved up for a few months to get. And I love it. Super fidgety, great in the hand. Mm -hmm. I have nothing bad to say about the Griptilian. Nor I, nor I. Now this next knife on the table has a bit of a story for me. So when I was a young boy, I was 17 years old, getting into knives, Mr. H says, hey George, don't tell my boss, come into my office, I wanna show you this knife. And he showed me his Benchmade Infidel. And I was like, oh my goodness, this thing is amazing. I also have the one that's smaller, and I like, I like them both, but the bigger one is more fun. Mm -hmm. You got an OTF, it's gotta be big. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That, what a great design. And, mm, that's uh, a McHenry and Williams design, right? I believe so. Yeah. One of the few, one of a couple on the table. We'll talk more about those. Yeah. But what a fun knife to have. I, I loved seeing them uh, in uh, shows like NCIS or whatnot. You know, the, <laughs> the military guys always have, you know, or, or the FBI guys always have something like that. So let's look at this next one. This one's called the Spike. And this is another one of the early knives that I bought, and I don't recall exactly where I got it. One of my students' father was on the board of directors, and he moved in from Oregon, and, and he knew that I was a knife collector and, and actually showed me a few that I couldn't get <laughs> uh, that are even older than these. But this is a really fun, really very, very impressive and, and a lot of fun. It's a slick design, but it's a big knife. Yeah, I've got the smaller version of it as well. Well, I wish I could remember what this one is called, but I just like to think of it as a beautiful work of art mm -hmm. with function. And it is just so much fun. Great uh, big titanium handle. Yeah. That knife's a meaty thing, but it's a beautiful meaty thing. It is a it's beaut. like Jack Black or Kevin James. Mm -hmm. There we go. The, the art teachers at uh, school used to love many <laughs> of my works of art. That's something I like about m many of the higher end knife companies is they realize that not only are these tools, but this is a canvas that you can turn into something beautiful and you can appreciate forever. Exactly, yeah. Now we're gonna take a quick break to hear from a very special person. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas everyone. Blade HQ right now is engraving knives for only $9.99. Make your knife so special, it's a magical Christmas for everyone. If you want your knife engraved, head to bleedhq.com and add engraving to your knife for only $9.99 from now until the end of the holiday season 2022. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas! Neil has a bit of an interesting story. So while I was in high school, I was off practicing the music he gave me, trying to sound like a burly Russian, but what, what were you up to? Well, I was out trying to enlarge my collection and my love for cutlery. Uh, I used to pop in regularly at Blade HQ my mug was well enough known that <laughs> Cam and some of the other guys that were working the counter would say, oh, Neil, nice to see you again. Uh, we're kind of busy. Just go ahead behind the counter and help yourself. Look, look at what you want, <laughs> let us know, and, and then uh, when you find something you really want, uh, we'll bring it up. And uh, so that's, that, that's one of the ways that uh, <laughs> I uh, enlarged my collection and always had a, a, a great time. And hearing Cam say, is it time for an infidel? Is it time for an infidel? Yeah, that must have been why you were excited to show me yours. It must have been a new thing or something. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, there's a bit of a forgotten piece of Benchmade history. Why don't you tell us about Indeed. it? Indeed. Many of you will remember when we had a blue class, a black class, and a red class. Well, this is one of the red class. What was special about the red class? Well, the red class is that they were a little bit less expensive. They were unique. Maybe it was designers that were just getting started. I'm not sure why they decided to go that way. AUS-8 with a, a unique way of releasing the lock. So you push down right there the in the middle. Yeah. How about that? It's still a bench made through and through, but it it's something is. that back in the day you could get it at an earlier price point. Yeah. Still beautiful, still functional. Okay, now next yeah. up, this is the knife on the table that I desperately wish was still in production. Benchmade, if you're listening, from me to you, please bring the 943 back. To me, it's really hard to beat. And, and of course, I've got the other blade configuration uh, and a couple of other handle configurations of the same knife. This is the first one like this that I purchased on Pier 39 in San Francisco, if I recall. Really? On a choir band trip. I remember going to Pier 39, going to Weeby Knives with you. There we go. That was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I always used to try and buy a, a knife uh, when we would go every year. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I succeeded. Sorry, Benchmade, but it's really hard to beat that design. And that may, it's just perfection, in my opinion. And the story behind the 940 and 941, 2 and 3 and dash, whatever, that story is a really cool one. So check out our other video we did on the Benchmade Osborne series. There's a really fun story there. And this is a prominent part of it. I kind of wish we could have had it in the video. All right, tell us about this little guy. Well, again, I've got enough that I don't remember what they are all called. But again, a work of art. I mean, if you look at the, the beautiful detailing, it's just such a, a lovely, lovely blade. This Different. one's a Nakamura design? Yeah, Nakamura mm -hmm. design. And this is a uh, first production. It's, it's great. And it, it has also a very unique release, a little button right there. And, uh, but it feels really good in the hand. Great little gentleman's knife, and it catches the eye. I don't think they make that one anymore. Not that I'm aware of. And not only do you have one of them, you have a first production run. Right, when you can get a first production <laughs> run or a pre-production, you do it <laughs> when you can. Yeah. yeah, tell us about this little, is this the Lurch? This is a Lurch. And uh, again, a, another usable piece of art that's just so wonderful with the spring assist, anodized, uh, titanium handle and it is just another first production uh, number 866 of a thousand so my favorite thing about this one is you can kind of see the process they went through so I'll, I'll bet you they cut out the major shape of the handle on titanium and then they bead plastered it with these textures and then they came in again with a different bit and they put these holes in so they really pop they're shiny and it just makes for a really beautiful knife and it's still so, so comfortable in the hand. Just wants to go to work. One of my favorites yes. on the table. Uh, here's another early bench made, one of the first that I purchased called a striker. And they make a striker still, I believe, but they make an auto version. But this is the blade configuration that was first. The, mm -hmm. the Tonto style that's half serrated. The thumb disc opener. With the thumb disc over, opener, liner lock, and uh, G10 handle. I literally, opened cans with this knife. And it just and took it, it. And its little brother, <laughs> and its little brother walked out the door oh, with that burglar many years ago. What a tragedy, ago. that burglar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was a sad, sad day. But you gotta hold on to this guy. Yes. And what a what a great little tactical knife. But you could probably slide that into an EDC roll with no trouble at all. And this one, this is one that's quite fascinating to me. It just looks, it looks different than any other knife on the table. All right, I believe this is another Osborne. Uh, it is an Osborne, and, and it's so functional, a little gentleman's knife. It's very uh, unassuming. You pull it out of your pocket mm -hmm. and go, eh, hey, that's, that's kind of cute. And then you open it up and someone sees the little logo and you go, that's a Benchmade? Wow, where'd you get that? When it went out of production, I quit carrying it and put it in its place of honor because I've got a few others that I can carry every day. It's so light and so easy to operate. Probably the first pocket knife that uh, was worth uh, upwards over the, over the hundred dollar mark mm -hmm. and some of my friends go are you nuts how much <laughs> is that worth well anyway lots of fun <laughs> this last one i saved the some one of the most historic for last because this knife was a pioneer yes why was it the pioneer the lock mm -hmm. the axis lock this was the 710 mchenry williams and when we were talking about that 940 series earlier, we were like, yeah, we should get a, we should get the original Axis lock in. We couldn't find one, but little do we know Mr. H had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Right, and I had his little brother, and again, that one walked away as well. I have seen so many people proudly carry this particular knife. I remember watching motorcycle gangs go down the road mm -hmm. if I was out on a road trip or whatnot, and I could see, you know, oh, here's McHenry Williams right there, you know, his, <laughs> on his little leathers, you know, <laughs> ready to go. But again, they like carry it on the outside yeah. just to show the world that, yeah, right. I got that knife and you don't in your face. Yeah. <laughs> We've all done that before. <laughs> but I mean, look at that, that recurve and, and it just, it's just a thing of beauty. That is quite the sampling of a Benchmade collection. Do you think this is even half? No. <laughs> Sorry to say. Sorry, dear. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us, Mr. H. My pleasure. You want to see other cool stuff from all these brands? Check it out at bladehq.com, and we'll see you on the next one.